Forget everything you think you know about SEO. In the 2020s, it's not as relevant anymore. Today, it's all about AI and Google's rank brain. So in this video, I'm gonna break down everything you need to know about this AI in just five parts. So what it is, how it works, keyword research hacks, how to optimize for click-through rate, and how to optimize your articles to rank in search results and make you money. But before we get started, I wanna invite you to watch my free masterclass. It covers how I make $300,000 a month with my blog and YouTube channel. Make sure to click the link in the description below. Thousands of students have gone through that. And let's get into the topic for today. So what is Google RankBrain? Well, in its simplest form, it's an AI algorithm used to sort search results. So before RankBrain, 100% of Google's algorithm was hand-coded by basically human engineers. But now the AI is able to tweak the algorithm on its own. And that's the key, it does this on its own. It works independently of people. So it works like this, depending on the keyword, it'll increase or decrease the importance of backlinks, content freshness, content length, domain authority, and a lot more. Then it looks at how searchers interact with the changes. So if it's better, the change stays. If not, RankBrain reverses the change and goes back to the old algorithm. But does it work? Well, yes, in fact, it does work and it outperformed Google's top engineers by 10%. So how does it actually work? Well, there are two main jobs it has. First is understanding keywords and search queries and measuring how people interact with those results. So first, let's look at keywords. So Google used to try to match the words searched by somebody to the words on a page or an article. Now, since RankBrain is AI, it's able to actually figure out what you mean by matching never before seen keywords to keywords Google has seen before. So for example, if you were to search Google for episodes of Breaking Bad where Walt runs over drug dealers, one of my favorites. It knows this and pulls up the episode half measures right away. It also shows video results, forums, recaps, episode guides, and all of that. Now, keywords couldn't do that alone. So basically with RankBrain, Google is able to use this machine learning to understand the search intent instead of just simple keyword rankings. The second part of measuring how is measuring user satisfaction and tweaking the algorithm based on the results. So here's how that works. So RankBrain shows the user a set of search results it thinks they'll like. And if more users click through one of those results versus others, that gives a user signal and it gives that page a boost. So in the end, it's about measuring how a user interacts with the search results or what's called user experience signals. Specifically, these are organic click-through rate, dwell time, bounce rate, and pogo sticking. So that's when a user quickly navigates back and forth between pages in the search results. So if Google can understand the intent behind a search, where does keyword research fit in? Well, it still matters, but it matters in a little bit of a different way. So here are some keyword research hacks to keep in mind. So first, stop using long tail keywords. So you used to have to create one page optimized for every single single keyword variation. So for example, you'd have one page might be optimized for online, uh, best online course platforms. And another page you'd be creating for best online learning software. And this was so Google could rank them for their different long tail keywords. But now RankBrain understands these terms are pretty much the same thing. So they're shown identical in the search results, the same content's ranking. So this means that long tail keywords are just kind of a waste of time now. Instead, you want to optimize around medium tail keywords. So these are words with more search volume, but not highly competitive. So when you optimize your pages this way, RankBrain automatically ranks you for the main term and the thousands and similar variations of that keyword. And you can mainly find these keywords as parent keywords in hrefs and other tools. So now getting your content to rank is only part of the goal. Now you need people to actually click through so that it stays ranking. So long gone are the days where you can just you know, optimize your title with keywords and consider it optimized and done. So now you need to think of each title like a copywriter does. So you need to pack your titles with emotion to give the user that extra push to click through. So you can use words like faster, easier, with less time or less effort. Base it on search intent and the psychology of what the reader actually wants. Another click-through rate hack is adding brackets and parentheses to your titles. So a study analyzed 3.3 million headlines and found that brackets outperform those without bracket titles by 33%. Also use numbers and not just for list posts. So studies show that numbers also also increase your title's click-through rate. So you can even use like two numbers. So for example, how to get 100,000 Instagram followers in less than 90 days has two numbers in it. Finally, don't forget to optimize your meta description for your click-through rate as well. So meta descriptions don't really make an impact on your SEO rankings, but they can boost your click-through rate because there's little words in there that people can see. So for your meta description, make it clear why someone should click your result. Use your target keyword if you can, and use some other search intent trigger words to help it stand out. So we've talked about keywords and your Google search result title and description to get people to click through. Next, we need to optimize your actual article for your bounce rate and dwell time. So first, you know, dwell time is the amount of time someone stays on your content after clicking through. The longer someone stays on your page, the more Google understands people love your content and then it could bump you up a few spots. But if the opposite's true and people bounce after just a couple seconds, Google probably assumes your content sucks and drops it down in the rankings. But that's not totally true because if someone hits your article, they receive the answer they want in just a few seconds and they don't go back to the search results page and click another article, that's actually a good thing too. So it's a little bit nuanced here. But overall, here's how to keep your readers 
interested and engaged in your article. So first, hook the reader writing above the fold content. So that space that they actually see right away is really important. And next, you want to write good intros and hook sentences that tell the reader exactly what they're about to get. So this goes back to search intent. So for example, if you're writing an article about how to lose weight, you don't want to give people you know, the history of weight loss, what weight loss means, metabolism and calories in versus calories out. Give them what they actually want. So something like, here are the top 10 ways to lose weight fast and keep it off with minimal effort. Get right to it. So third, you want to blanket the topic so readers feel like they got a solid answer that they're looking for. So you don't want to leave any missing pieces here. So for example, in my article on e-commerce platforms, I have an early section that talks about how we're going to cover the best for small business, the best cheap and free options, the best for designs, the best for large businesses, and the best for SEO. So if you cover it all, then people won't you know, want to go back and click on another article. Now fourth, give it your own personal touch. So in my blog post, I have sections that go over my specific take, what I like and dislike, my own personal story a little bit. That helps build trust with your audience and makes, you know, makes me a little bit more than just a random blog. And fifth, make your text easy to read and digest. So break up your content with bullet points, headings, bold text, images, and keep it easy on the eyes. Now remember, Google is getting smarter, so you have to up your game and provide the best possible content. Luckily, a lot of other blogs aren't really doing the best job, so you don't have to create the perfect content plan. You just have to beat them. So in the end, the world runs on algorithms, and to stay current, you have to understand Google Rank Brain and user signals and implement some new AI-based strategies into your blogging business. So if that was interesting to you, if you want to learn more about how I make $300,000 a month with my blog, make sure to click the link in the description below. Sign up for that free 60 minute training. And let me know what you think. You know, are you using Google Rank Brain and any of these user signals in your on page and off page SEO strategies? What are you doing to rank your blog content today? Please like the video, comment below. I'll do my best to answer. Watch other videos on my channel on blogging, SEO, you know, running an online business, making money online. Again, like the video, hit that notification bell, and I will see you in the next video.